What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is Killer Drone, and welcome back to some more Minecraft here in our How to Build a Village series. In today's episode ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build this entire building that you see behind us from the mason mine as well as the stone mason building, tying it all together and having yourself a gorgeous, gorgeous house in your village. So without further ado ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and let's get get started with our mason build. So as always, let's go ahead and talk a little bit first about what we were trying to accomplish here. First and foremost, I wanted to have a mine for my mason to pull rocks out of the ground and then use in buildings, in churches, in whatever we need to build around the city. So I needed a place for him to actually extract the stone from, and then I thought it would be a good idea to just have a moving part to our entire build. So I have myself a chest minecart going down in the mine, bouncing off, and then just coming right back back it adds a bit of movement to our build and I really like that so that is kind of the idea behind this entire structure was to get in the mine as well as get in some movement to this build and I think that it came out really nicely so without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and let's get into this build Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the layout for our stonemason building. And this building is going to be a little bit different than any of the other ones in the series, and that's because it's going to have two separate parts to it. First off is this left side, which is where the quarry is going to be, and then the right side is where the actual stonemason building is going to be. So let's go ahead and start over here with the quarry. I have this laid out as a 9 by 13 area. Now, this area is likely going to get a little bit bigger as I incorporate some of these extras that I have laid around here. But for just the initial explosion area, a 9 by 13 will be absolutely plenty. Between this area and this building over here is going to be a six block gap. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's so that we can actually fit a path from our gate underneath some of the uh, cart rails that are going to be going in between here. Now, over on the right side is where the actual building is going to be. And this is a 13 by 15 building with a small jut out to the side that is seven by six. So that is the full layout of our build, but we're actually gonna start over here at the quarry. And I'm going to start off with some TNT. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can either dig yourself out a nice area here for you to have a quarry going down into, or for you to have a minecart rail going down into, or you can bust out the TNT and have a little bit of fun. So what I'm gonna do is come down into the center of our area and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm just going to place down some TNT and get ourselves a bit of an explosion going so that we have a nice area there in the center to work with. And that's not exactly what I wanted. <laughs> okay, so after a bit of dirt work, this thing is looking a little bit better and I now have my layout back in place so that we can continue working around here. So what we're gonna do is come over to this back right-hand corner and we're going to count out to the left by five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on the next block, we are going to place a stone brick. Then we're going to skip one block and then place another stone brick, skip another block and then place another stone brick. So you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and bring each one of these up by another three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Just like that. Then go ahead and get yourself some polished andesite and run it up one, over one, and then remove that temporary block and bring this up to five high. So one, two, three, four, five. Same thing over here, just like so. One, two, three, four, five. And then for the top, you're gonna to come up one, over one, and then remove that block. And you're now going to have this nice little decorative piece that is going to act as a support for our minecart rail. Next, what we're gonna do is come out with some strip spruce logs, and we're gonna come out by two blocks, just like this from the top, and then come over by one, in by one, just like that remove this block and then come down one more. And then this is where our pillar is going to be. So go ahead and replace that block so that it's facing up. 
And now what you're gonna do is run a pillar all the way to the bottom of your quarry, just like this, all the way down to the ground, like so. And this is where we're actually going to run our minecart tracks looping around this pole. Now to do this, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either start from the bottom and hope that you end up at this point right here, or you can just start from the top and make sure that you're working your way down properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start from the top. I wanna make sure that I end up at this location right here for our minecart to pass through. So because of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run planks just like this, or I guess uh, oak slabs just like this. And then on our edges where we're coming against this pole is where we actually want to drop by a block. So what we'll do is have something like this and then here is where our drop will be and then another block out. And then once you come back to even with this pole, you'll drop by another block. And this is basically how you go around this entire pole is whenever you're touching the pole, you drop by a full block. Okay, so you have your oak half slabs going all the way around your pole, going all the way down deep into the earth. Once you get down to the bottom down here, you're going to want something to send a minecart back. So the way that I like to do this is I'm going to place a slime block in the wall just like this so that the cart will come and bounce off of it for sure. And then I put a lever above that and then a powered rail just like so. So whenever a minecart comes down, instead of stopping against this block, it will actually bounce off the slime block, get powered again, and go right the way back up. So now all we need to do is get ourselves some rails in here, and then anywhere that we have a slope up, we can put a powered rail with a lever above it flicked on, and that will actually make sure that our minecart goes all the way up to the top. Now, something that I particularly like to do is I like to slow this minecart down. I don't like it going at full speed the entire time. So what I like to do is I will place the powered rails very strategically as I go around to make sure that it just has enough momentum to get up the slope. I don't want it to be flying up the slope as fast as it possibly can. So what I'll do is sometimes I'll just, you know, have it one level above the previous powered rail. So it still has a good ways that it has to climb on its own before it gets to the next powered rail. Now that's just something that I like to do. If you want to place a powered rail on every single one of these blocks, you totally can do that. It's just going to make your uh, minecart look like it's flying, you know? So just kind of take it however you want to do it, to be honest with you. But uh, this is how I choose to do it. I kind of want to slow this, uh, this whole thing down a bit. So continue coming around over and over again with your rails just like this until you reach this point right here that is holding up your minecart rail. Okay, so we have the rail line for the quarry in. Let's go ahead and get it into our mason building over here. So to do that, what we're gonna do is in line with where this stone brick pillar is, we're going to place a stone brick here. Same with this one here and here. And then what we're gonna do is just mimic the exact same design, bring it up by three blocks. So you should have four block high stone brick walls like so. Go ahead and get out your polished andesite, go up one over one. But this time, instead of going up by five, we're gonna go up by six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, just like so. And then same thing over on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in between these two blocks, we're gonna place two half slabs of uh, spruce in between. So double spruce half slab right in between there. And then what we're gonna do is come with some oak slabs and we're gonna come out by nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that should bring us all the way inside of our other building. Go ahead and come to the end of this rail cart and bring it up by two blocks of oak half slabs. This is just gonna be our stopping block. Go ahead and place a powered rail here with a lever on it so that it will bounce back the other way. And then all of these other blocks, go ahead and just run regular rail on top. And then on the rail that is going in between our support structures, go ahead and add a half slab to the underside of that just so that you fill in that gap 
just like so. So you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And if we go ahead and test this chest minecart, hopefully this thing will make it all the way to the bottom as well as make its way all the way back up to the top. And it should do so pretty slowly. And it didn't make it. <laughs> okay, so I don't have enough powered rails in my design here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove this, place that there, and another lever. And oh, it's gonna go back to the bottom first. There we go, let's see if it makes it up now. There we go, so it's very, very slow. Okay, so we're gonna need another one right here. And this is just how I kind of play around with this. I don't want it to be just going up as fast as possible. I want it to be kind of slow as it goes across. And there we go, that looks like it'll work. On the way down, it's gonna be flying, but on the way back up, it should slowly, slowly come up, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the stonemason building itself. And what we're gonna start off with is the awning that is out front. And the reason that I put an awning on this build is theoretically if somebody's coming in from the town, they could bring their cart of supplies or whatever right underneath this awning to deliver them to the stonemason. So that's kind of the reason for it is so that a cart could fit underneath the front part of the building. So now what we're gonna do is start in this front left-hand corner and place a chiseled stone brick right here three block gap, another chiseled stone brick, three block gap, another chiseled stone brick, and then another three block gap with a chiseled stone brick. So you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and get yourself out some cobblestone walls, place them three blocks up on top of each one of these chiseled stone bricks, just like this. Go ahead and get yourself out some polished andesite, place one on top of each one of those poles. So you should have something that looks like this. Go over to our front pillar here of our minecart railway system and place yourself a stone brick here and then one out to the right hand side of that. On the left hand side of this andesite block, go ahead and place another stone brick. Go up one with a temporary block and then place another block like that. So you should have something that looks like this. You can now go ahead and just bring back all of these stone bricks all the way down to the end because this is going to be our roof line. We will remove some of these stone bricks here in a minute in order to add a little bit of a window, a little outcropping to the roof. But for right now, this will do. Just go ahead and drag this all the way back so you know what your roof line is going to look like. All the way back to here. Now, along where our polished andesite is, go ahead and get out some dark oak slabs and run a strip all the way down on top of those polished andesite, just like so. Behind that, go ahead and place some spruce stairs going in a row all the way down here like this. Spruce slabs up on top, just like this, going all the way down. And I'm not covering any of the trimming right now because there's gonna be something special that we're doing with that. It's gonna be kind of a more interesting design for that. Over on the back side, you're gonna copy the exact same thing. Spruce stairs going all the way down, just like this. And then just like we did on the other side, we're going to do a strip of dark oak slabs right here going down. So you should have something right now that looks like this. Now, where our dark oak slabs are, instead of having a dark oak slab overhang, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop by half a slab and then place a spruce slab just like that. Then we're gonna do a spruce stair here, two spruce stairs, a spruce stair like that, or two spruce slabs and a stair like that, and then a spruce slab down just like so. So you should have a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of kind of a bump up into that dark oak. Now along the front, all we're gonna do is just drag this spruce slab all the way across the front, just like that. And then even with this, so you, you once again have that bump down and then a spruce stair there, two spruce slabs, a spruce stair, and then another drop down with a spruce slab right there. And that should be your roof. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a little bit of detail to this by adding in a nice little uh, outcropping to this roof. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a, another dark oak slab here. And just so you can get a alignment, it's kind of up and over one from that polished andesite. Same thing on this side, just like so. Go ahead and remove these blocks here and you can go ahead and punch a hole in there to let some light in. And then from this area, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, this 
half slab here and this half slab here. Bring out some spruce stairs just like this on each side so that you have something that looks a bit like this for right now. Go ahead and bring it out by one more spruce stair like so. And then you're gonna take a spruce slab like that and then run it over on top of your outcropping. So you should have something that looks like this. You can go ahead and get yourself some white stained glass and just place it right in there like that. Now on the underside of this, what I would do is I would place either some stone brick or some double spruce slabs like this. And I would probably just decorate up on the side of these polished andesites like so. And now you have something that looks very nice at the front. However, you may have a little bit of an issue with something like this. So what I would do is just clean this out a bit and make it look like you can actually see out of that roof at some point. So there you go. Just remove a few of those stone bricks like so. And you got something that's looking pretty good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to put in this back wall back here. So what I'm gonna do is come out by five blocks. So we have one already. So one, two, three, four. And then the exact same thing on the other side in line with this. So uh, stone brick there, one, two, three, four, five. And we should have a three wide entrance way right here in the middle. Go ahead and just bring this up like so. And there we go, we have ourselves a nice little entranceway. Go ahead and get yourself some stone brick stairs out. Uh, let's see, stone brick stairs, there we go, and place them in the corners like this in order to round that out and just make it look a little bit more like an arch. So now to fill in this front wall, all we're gonna do is come with stone bricks in a circle just like this to where we now have a two block gap. Go ahead and get yourself out some iron bars and fill them in just like so. On the other side, go ahead and get yourself some stone bricks and run them up until they connect up to the roof. And then go ahead and just do once again, another loop like this. And you should have another two block gap where you can add in some iron bars. And now this is going to be the front face of this side of the build. Now let's go ahead and head around to the back side, and this is going to be probably the most complex wall of the build, so just try to follow along as best you can. So what we're gonna do first is start over here in this corner with a stone brick here, and then three cobblestone walls on top of it. So one, two, three. Then we're gonna break out our polished andesite and come up by an additional seven polished andesite. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna come over here to this corner. We're going to start with a stone brick here and then come up by once again, three cobblestone walls. So one, two, three. And then on top of that, we are going to place two polished andesite. So one, two. So right now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now we're gonna work on a cross beam coming from here to here. And this is just going to help us section off the build here fairly quickly. So what we're gonna do is come with a stone brick here. Then we're gonna come with three chiseled stone brick. One, two, three. And then another stone brick here. And then a polished andesite. And then another stone brick. And then three chiseled stone brick. One, two, three. And then another stone brick like so. So this is the pattern that you should have. Stone brick, three chiseled, stone brick, polished, stone brick, three chiseled, stone brick. That is what you should have. Go ahead and copy that down. And now this is going to be fairly easy to line up everything that we need to. So here where we have this stone brick, go ahead and just bring up a wall just like so. Same thing in the middle for this chiseled stone brick. Go ahead and bring up a stone brick wall like that. Same thing on the other side of this where we have another stone brick. You're going to go ahead and bring up a stone brick wall just like that. Go ahead and copy the exact same thing over onto this side. Go ahead and bring up stone bricks here, bring up stone bricks here, and then bring up stone bricks here. So you should have a wall that is sectioned off just like this. Now what we can do is go ahead and come in with some polished andesite and we're gonna run it all the way up in a pillar down the center until you're even with your other pillar here. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and get in the top section and go ahead and section this off a little bit. So what we'll do is come up one block here. So we'll have a one block gap and then come with some stone bricks just like this in a line all the way across like so. 
go ahead and come up to the top and in the center block, what you'll do is come with stone bricks like this, bring it up even to your roof. And then on the left hand side, come with polished andesite like this. And then on the right side, we will have some stairs and some iron bars. So iron bars along here and then stairs upside down like so and then right side up and then upside down once again. And that's actually going to be a window as well as on this side, we're going to have three blocks of iron bars on this side. Now up at the top, it doesn't particularly matter what you do to fill this in, but I'm going to use stone bricks just to make that a nice flat wall across the top. Now in these areas where we have some gaps, we're going to go ahead and fill this in right here in the middle. We're going to have some chiseled stone brick there, and then we're going to have an iron bar here, an iron bar here, and then a cobblestone wall here and here. So you're kind of filling that wall in at this point. In these gaps where you have a gap at the floor, what we're going to do is take some chiseled stone brick, fill them in, in each one of these gaps. So you should have something like this. And now for these windows here, what you're going to do is go and get out some white stained glass and fill them in just like this to get yourself some nice pretty windows down here at the bottom. So this is where you should be at now. As I said, this back wall is probably the most complex of the entire build. Now, right next to where this polished andesite is, go ahead and get yourself out your iron bars once again. Get yourself a cobblestone wall right next to that, get a uh, iron bar, get a chiseled stone brick, get a, another iron bar, and then get another cobblestone wall. So you should have something that looks like this. Once again, very, very complex wall, but it is a very detailed and good looking wall. There's a couple of added uh, details that you can add in real quick, which I'm going to go ahead and do. So go ahead and take two stone bricks up just like this with a cobblestone stair on top. And then you can also add yourself in a windowsill just like this on the underside of your windows. And then just to add a little bit more detail, if you want to go ahead and remove this center block and replace it with chiseled stone brick in between both of your windows. So this should be what your back wall looks like at this point. So next let's go ahead and get in the front wall here as well as the awning that's gonna come out to the right side. So what we're gonna do is start on the side where the awning is and go right behind the outcropping that we made earlier to this dark oak half slab here. Go ahead and place six polished andesite going up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, just like so. Go ahead and place three polished andesite across the top just like that. And then what we can do is go ahead and connect this up with some stone bricks just across the top and across the bottom down here. So you should now have something that looks a bit like this. Go ahead and section this off into stone bricks down the middle like so. And then two stone bricks on this side and two stone bricks on this side. So now you should have something that looks a bit like this for this panel. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and get in some iron bars. We're gonna place iron bars here and here and here and here. So you should have iron bars that look like this. And now all we need to do is get in our stairs. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a right side up stair here and then an upside down stair underneath that right side up stair and then an upside down stair like this. So that is going to be our wall. Going to do the exact same thing on the other side, right side up, upside down, right side up, and then one last upside down. So you should have a wall that's looking nice, just like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the right side of this. And we're just going to do kind of a general layout for the awning for right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to this side and we are going to place some stone bricks alongside these stone bricks all the way up to here. And then even with this polished andesite, we're going to do two polished andesite up just like that. Go ahead and connect up from this polished andesite over to this one with some stone bricks. So you should have something that looks like this. Now what we're gonna do is place three cobblestone walls on top of here. So you should have something that looks like that. And then on top of that is going to be where our awning of campfires go. So what you'll do is come out and get your campfires out. And then you'll just place your campfires going back just like so. And then you'll extinguish them a little bit later. 
This is where our awning is going to be, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. For right now, to fill out this wall, go ahead and place some cobblestone walls just like so, and that is going to be the front face of your build. Okay, so now looking at the build from this direction, we're going to go ahead and get in the awning as well as the second floor in place. So from the front, you're going to come around to the right side where our extension is over here. And this is the area that we're going to be working with. So what we're going to do is we're first off going to come to this polished piece of andesite here. And we're going to take some stone bricks straight the way across. And then we're going to bring it all the way back across the entire build. And this is going to be the floor of this second floor balcony so just go ahead and bring this all the way across this is going to make the foundation for our second floor so go ahead and fill all of this in okay so now that you have that floor in go ahead and come over to the right side where our stone bricks ended and place a polished andesite just like that we're going to come up from there three cobblestone walls just like this and then this is once again where our awning is going to sit also, I do believe that I put this one too far back, so go ahead and remove that campfire. You should have one, two, three, four, five campfires in a row, and it's going to come back until it reaches the roof back here. Speaking of roof, let's go ahead and get that in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come with some polished andesite right here, one block out from this polished andesite pillar, and come up by five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to surround this with some stone brick just in a circle in order to finish off this roof. So you should have a nice little circle here. Go ahead and take yourself some spruce stairs and you're going to place them all the way around the outside edge, except for in the corners. You're going to leave the corners empty just to give it a little bit of a different look, a more sharp look from the edges. Go ahead and wrap this all the way around the entire build until you have something that looks a bit like this. Then on top of these blocks here, you're going to come with dark oak slabs, just like so, and a ring on top of here. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. And then on top of this, what we're gonna do is do a spruce slab right here on top of that. And we're just gonna fill all of this in with spruce slabs all the way around. And that will be your roof done. Okay, so for this doorway, what we're going to do is come over to this left-hand side. We're going to place some spruce slabs at the bottom, as well as some double spruce slabs at the top. We're going to go ahead and throw in some white stained glass panes just in there like so. And then for the face of this doorway, what we're going to do is we're going to start by sectioning it off with some spruce planks on this side, some spruce planks on this side, and then just running a beam across the top just like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to have a dark oak slab here and a dark oak slab here. And then along the bottom side of this slab, we're going to do a spruce slab there, there, and there. So you should end up with kind of a wave pattern above that doorway. That's looking pretty nice. Now, right down here, what you're gonna do is place another spruce plank here, another spruce plank there. So you should have a doorway that's looking a bit like this. Go ahead and get yourself out some iron bars and you're going to place them here, 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 and here. So you should have a doorway that's looking a bit like that. Now go ahead and get out your cobblestone walls and run them all the way connecting up to that polished andesite there. And then you can place one here for like a torch or something like that. And then another one there for another torch or something like that there. Last but not least, we're going to want some spruce trap doors. So let's go ahead and grab those out real quick. And these are just going to add a nice little difference in texture along this doorway. So just go ahead and flip yourself some spruce trap doors just like so down like that. And there you go. You have yourself a nice little entrance out to your balcony. Now, for your balcony, you should still have one open side here. In order to get ourselves a railing this direction, what we're gonna do is spruce trap doors just like this on each side, and then down the middle where you have your two wide gap, you're gonna go ahead and get yourself a couple of oak trap doors just like this in the middle, and that is your awning pretty much done. Now all you need to do is get your campfires in, and I'm actually going to remove all of my campfires for right now because I want them all facing the same direction so it doesn't bother me. So there we go. I'm just going to place them all like this. And then to extinguish a campfire, in case you guys have never done it, you can either use a shovel or you can use bottled water 
a splash potion of bottled water in order to get rid of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it the easy way with a shovel. Very, very simple. Get whatever shovel out that you want and then just right click on all of your campfires. And there you go. You get yourself a nice little awning texture. Okay, so to fill out the underside of this wall, what we're going to do is we're going to come and start out by adding in the little offshoot from the main building over to the side here. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to come to this block right here, and we're going to come up by four blocks. So one, two, three, four. We're going to skip three, and then right here on this corner, one, two, three, four. So you should have two pillars sticking out from your building like that. Come over to where this cobblestone wall is and place a stone brick here and then a stone brick here and then down one over one, a stone brick just like that. Now what you should be able to do is bring up a cobblestone pillar right here all the way up to the top of your build. And then what we'll do is two chiseled stone brick like that and then a polished andesite pillar going all the way up to the top like that. Once again, two stone brick, just like that. Two chiseled stone brick, just like that. And then chiseled stone brick, chiseled stone brick, and then iron bars, just like that in those holes. And you should have something that looks a bit like this. Now what you can do is go ahead and add the roof itself. And to do this, what we're gonna do is take some dark oak slabs, run it along the top of this polished andesite pillar, do the exact same thing over here. And you're going to overhang these by one from the block edge. Off to the side, what you're gonna do is take out some spruce slabs and do it once again, one out from the block edge and do it just one block lower. So you should have something that looks like this. Same thing on this side, go all the way down the length of the building and come out to here. And then for the top, we're going to do kind of a flat top roof. And to do this, what we're gonna do is come over by one on each side with some dark oak slabs and then down the middle we're going to run spruce so spruce all the way out to the end and then dark oak slabs on either side of that spruce so you should have a nice little offshoot to your right hand side of your build that looks something like this Okay, so for this wall, what we're gonna do is start over here where our minecart track is. And underneath here, what we're gonna do is just add iron bars into all of these gaps. So you should have something that looks just like that. A nice, very supported structure underneath where that minecart track is going to go. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to come to our second floor where our floor is going to come. And we're going to add a line of stone bricks out just like this so it should be even with our minecart tracks and then we're going to place an iron bar right here in this corner and then chiseled stone brick all the way in a loop all the way around the entire section here so you should make a big circle with a two wide gap right here in the middle what we're going to do is underneath these two chiseled stone brick is place two iron bars and then we're going to do once again with our cobbled stone stairs stairs like this and then upside down stairs like this so you should have a nice decorative piece in that little section of wall now on top of here what we're going to do is add in some nice windows for the second floor so what we're going to do is add a complete circle of spruce all the way around just like this so you should have a circle that looks like so. Then we're gonna go ahead and split that up into two. So you should have something like that that looks like windows. And then go ahead and get yourself out some white stained glass. Place them right here on either side. And then we'll place some spruce trap doors right here. So you have a nice little window shutter on each side. Something just like that. And then we're going to do once again the sign function with the spruce and dark oak slabs. So you're going to have a spruce slab here, spruce slab here, spruce slab here, and then dark oak, dark oak there. And then along the top, you're gonna to have dark oak here and here, and then spruce there, there, and there. So you're gonna have kind of a, a wave look to the top and bottom. And that is the entire outside of the build done other than some of the decor stuff. So we want to get in some foundations for our pathways and we also want to clean up around the uh, actual mason area where we're going to be taking the stone out of the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to come back and show you guys because it's mostly going to be a lot of landscaping but I still wanna give you guys an idea of how you would do a build like this.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the build completely done. Let me go ahead and give you guys a quick walkthrough of some of the minor details that I added in. Like I told you guys, I really wanted to get some rock formations around where our mason mine is. So what I did was I took some andesite and some cobble slabs as well as some double cobble slabs and some cobblestone and things like that and just made a couple of different mounds, just some areas where you can tell that rocks are being pulled up from the earth and maybe these were you know things that you know were left over from a project and they just didn't finish using them or something and they just kind of scattered around the job site the job site is also going to be very heavily trafficked with a bunch of workers and stuff so i made the area look a little bit muddy by adding in some pod soles, some brown, uh, what is this, concrete powder, and then some path blocks and some coarse dirt. So it's kind of a muddy mess over here, and you can totally tell that's meant to be kind of a working area. It is an area that things are definitely happening. But let's go ahead and let's head through our awning here, where we now have a nicer path. We have ourselves some cobblestone mixed in with some gravel as well as a bit of coarse dirt ever so slightly every now and then, as well as some andesite every so now and then, which, yeah, you can see just a little bit there. There's some andesite there. Not a ton, but I have a little bit of it in here. And as you can tell, it's definitely throwing off the Mason vibes. It's feeling very uh, like somebody actually constructed some of this stuff, but it is a little bit more run down. It's not perfect. It's kind of a medieval Mason structure, which I really like. So if we go ahead and head through our new lighting, we'll go ahead and head inside. And we have quite a lot actually fit into here. Over here to the right, we have some type of water trough as if we needed that in order to polish some of of the uh, stone that he gets. We have ourselves a workbench where he has some different cups that he's using to do cup things. I, I really didn't think about that to be honest with you, but it looks good. Over here on the wall, we have a painting with some, uh, some different tools and such. Also some weaponry in case he needs it for whatever reason. Uh, we also have like some bags or whatever he needs in order to carry stuff. You know, maybe he's going to church and he needs himself a little satchel. Those are hanging up right here. We got ourselves a pickaxe that he'll use in order to mine in the masonry. And then over here, we have ourselves a nice big stone cutter setup so the idea is that he runs some of the unrefined stone and stuff through the stun cu cutters through the blades and then over here to the right we have some much more processed uh stone we have some uh stone bricks as well as some stone slabs so that was kind of the idea around that so it is kind of kind of fitting in here it's kind of a little bit tight there's not a ton of room and i think we fit this uh stuff in quite nicely we also have some nice lighting up above that doesn't need to be there there we go we have some nice lighting up above and if we go ahead and take this ladder up to the second floor You'll see that I actually added in a lift to this second floor up here. I added a half slab to the roof in order to make it a full block. I connected up a grindstone and then added some iron bars in order to make kind of a lift so that you can unload from the mine cart whenever it comes here onto this lift and then get them down to the bottom floor. And then to get them back out of this building, you can use the lift in order to access the mine cart again if you need to. So. Just some different ways for you to get stones in and out of the buildings. I thought this was a nice touch, so I went ahead and added it. And then out here is going to be his, let's call it a bedroom. It's not really a bedroom because I still wanted it to give off the balcony vibes. So what I did was I made a hammock here. I have string on the floor with two fence posts on either side and then some carpet on top here. And this is his bed. Kind of. <laughs> the guy sleeps in a hammock, okay? That is that is my logic here. And then over here to this side, we just have ourselves a little chair on the ground there. But that is a small idea of what you can do with the building on the inside. Also underneath here, I added in some stone and some gravel and such. I'm not really covering a ton of landscaping because I want to cover a entire video on landscaping a village here a little bit later where we'll actually get into path making and making trees 
and parks and stuff like that and that will allow us to clean up some of these edges and stuff but i just wanted to give you guys some of the you know touches that you can add into your build but anyway ladies and gentlemen that is going to be it for me today i do hope that you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to leave a like on the video as well as if you're new around here be sure to subscribe we're going to be covering a ton more villager houses here in the future so make sure that you're around for that but anyway guys that's going to be it for me today i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one you guys have a great day